This is where my great grandpa Joseph built the first grain bin ever on my family's farm in the late 1970s. Clearly, the original grain bin is no longer here. And in the past 50 years, we have added many new things, such as more grain bins, a grain leg, a grain dryer, a grain receiving pit, in addition to, you guessed it, even more grain bins. I'm Matthias, a 24-year-old fifth-generation farmer, and today I'll be leading you through a history of our grain site setup on our farm from how it's changed over the past 50 years. And lucky for you guys, today you're going to get to see several things in action because we're starting to haul some corn to town. And the first stop on the tour is right here. Whereas previously mentioned, my great grandpa built a 7,000 bushel bin, which as you can tell, is no longer here. And the second bin ever built on our farm was another 27 foot diameter, 7,000 bushel bin, which was right here. And then eventually as we built the leg, we moved it over here to our dry bin where my brother Mason is standing. And to tell you the story behind the next four bins built on my family's farm by my grandpa between the 1980s and the 1990s, we have my brother Mason here today, who's making his channel debut, which, as you can tell, he's two inches shorter than me, two years younger than me, but is too good looking. Right. <laughs> so I'll have him describe to you the next four bands. All right. So the next two we have right beside me here over my shoulders, they both are 30 foot in diameter, both hold 15,000 bushels, and were built in 1983 by my grandpa and his family. And today on the farm, we still use them. When these bins were originally constructed, as you can see here, and on this bin, it's on the other side, but there was no floor in them. There was an auger that ran underneath and through the concrete to unload them. And since then, as you can see with the color change there on each of them, we have added a supported floor. That way we can put a power sweep in there and put a larger unload right here on each of them. The next bin we're looking at right here is a little bit smaller, so only going to be about 27 feet in diameter and holds about 13,000 bushels. Was built around 1985 by my grandpa and his family, and we still use this bend today. Uh, most recently, within the last year, we updated the sweep auger and everything inside, so I'll take you in there. But first, I gotta explain why this is my brother's probably favorite bend because when I'm up at college, he can't be pushing my buttons, so he's pushing these buttons right here. I'll take you inside here, show you the power sweep. So here we got our built-in sweep auger right here. This is inside this 27 foot diameter bend. And so the benefits of this is that it's actually built inside the grain bend. Here we'll have it already connected and then it reduces our manpower of actually physically bringing in a separate auger every time we need to unload these bends. As Mason was describing, that's different from this traditional sweep auger which this one we put inside some of our bends without what we call power sweep or an automatic sweep auger. So this we will physically have to carry in, mount the motor, and then follow behind to scoop any grain that it doesn't clean out of the bin. So that's the story on these three grain bins that my grandpa built in the early and late 80s. And obviously as corn production began to grow, we started to raise more bushels, needing more on-farm storage, which meant my grandpa put up one of the largest bins that still remains on our farm. This here is that last grain bin that my grandpa built in 1986. This is a 42 foot diameter grain bin, holds just shy of 27,000 bushels. Obviously, we still use this grain bin today, and we modified this grain bin by not only adding that door right there on the side, because at the time when it was built, they didn't use any doors on the side to go in, other than this to get the sweep auger in, and since we added the door, we also added a power sweep, like we were describing earlier. That way it made things a lot easier to unload grain out of this grain bin. This grain bin is obviously now hooked up to the leg, but prior to our grain leg being here and being installed and put up in 2009, the way that we filled this grain bin was with our old drying system, which we had over here. We had a dryer set up with a shed around it in addition to a 2,000 bushel cone bottom bin that way we could take in wet grain from the field run it through the dryer dry it and then send it to any of these bins in the back row as well as our 42 foot bin to store over winter the next two grain bins we're going to be looking at are the grain bins that were built in 2003 and as you can see a truck's coming in here now so we're going to give you guys a little behind the scenes 
of how we're actually going to unload and fill the semi up. So back in the day when these bins were built, since they're kind of off here in the corner, we intended to just unload them into wagons. But now as things have advanced and machinery's gotten bigger, we're using semis, which means we're kind of up against this shed here. So I'm watching this trucker back up and new to this position. That's good. First, we're going to turn on our conveyor here. And then I turn on the unload to take the corn up to the truck. I have to fill it up this back half of the semi here. I'll tell you a little bit more about these grain beds that were built in 2003. So they were built originally by Matthias and I's dad, so Mike. And then a little fun fact that I think is interesting about these is that the concrete for each of these beds foundation was actually poured by our other side of our family, our grandpa and our uncle. So they do construction and a little bit of farming on the side. So I think that's very interesting. These beds are 36 feet diameter. Well, 21,000 bushels. Then, of course, like Mason, if he's around, these bends, we're going to use them. So that's going to round off everything on this mine of great lead right here. That's trucks loaded. Now back at the tour. After the addition of these two grain bends in 2003, not much, if anything, has changed here in the back row of bins. Fast forward then to 2009, and my dad, Mike, put up this 116-foot, 6,000-per-bushel grain leg, which we're still using today, and I love having in terms of grain efficiency and flow of grain, grain harvest. Prior to 2009 and putting up the grain leg and some of the other additions that we'll get to, there was an old chicken coop building sitting right here that obviously we needed to take down to make room for our grain site expansion. With the room now down from the old chicken coop that was here, it made room for our new Brock SQ24 grain dryer, which can dry a thousand bushels an hour down from 18.5% moisture to 15.5% moisture. And we looped this in with the grain leg, that way we could dump a semi into the grain leg and start filling the dryer or what was previously our wet bend in the fall. With the leg installation, we also put in this drag leg conveyor, which is what we use to bring in our whole red truck, our wagons, our semis. That way we didn't have to set up any more augers to fill any of our other bins. We could just drive over this underground auger and it would take the grain up the leg and drop it into our desired bin. Also in 2009, we put up this large 48-foot diameter bin, which we call our large corn bin. And this is one that we use to unload with this drag conveyor and back into the leg. That way it comes into this spout to fill a truck when we're hauling corn back out of the bin. Here's a live look. We just had a truck pull under this overhead spout I was talking about. We're actually taking corn out of that big corn bin, which will get run through our underground drag conveyor. Start filling him up. We now have a pause for our regularly scheduled tour content as this 36 foot bin that we were in unloading out of earlier is now getting down to the sump, the point where we're gonna have to put the sweep auger in. Because these two bins are the same size, we already emptied this one and the sweep auger is still in there. So Dad and I are gonna try pulling that sweep auger out of there while Mason starts going in there. To start getting ready for the sweep auger. So now Matthias and I are inside this 36 foot bend, scooping it out here. Now we're trying to clear out this doorway here, so we got all this corn in the way. So we're gonna try to make room for that sweep auger. Little fun fact about Matthias around the farm is that sometimes we call him Kit Kat. Always looking for a break. Standing around here. Just had a small avalanche of grain fall down into the center sump. This is definitely one of the concerns and safety worries of being inside of a bin is having the corn under your feet start to go to the center sump and you starting to sink in the bin. But as you can tell, since we got the side door open, someone's standing out there. Mason's here. There's not a lot of corn in the bin. We're being as safe as we can. 
Look, look at the ambition of Mason right here. Now compare that to Dad. Mason? Dad. Not even close. <laughs> Now that we got this little channel cleaned out of corn, we're bringing the sweet bogger in. Yep. Just got the first truck loaded up here. We got three more waiting outside. So we're gonna try to see if we can empty out the rest of this bed. It's gonna be close, but we'll see what we can do here. We didn't have enough trucks here to empty out the bed completely. As you can tell, we got maybe another 100, 150 bushels back in here to go. So we'll get this cleaned out tomorrow since that's the last for the trucks for today. But now we'll continue on with a grain site tour. Also in 2009 when we put up the leg, we also moved some bins around here in the back row. Remember that second 7,000 bushel bin that my grandpa put up over there in the corner? That got moved over to this position right here on the leg. And that is what became our dry bin. And it's from that drive-in where we put up this white shed right here. The purpose of everything inside what we call our blower shed is this takes grain from that dry bin right here, so dry corn that comes out of the dryer, and it blows it into the bins in our north row as well as any other bins that we have built since 2009 with this blower and unload right here. Here are those pipes that are coming out of the blower system. One thing that I like that they have engineered about this system at our farm site is as you can see these planks right here on the ground, there's actually one of these pipes that runs underneath those planks and that is what can take the corn from what we call our south site to our north site here. That way we can blow it into all these bins during harvest season, again eliminating the use of setting up augers and speeding up harvest process by unloading into the leg. Our surge bin here is obviously newer than 50 years old, and this one right here was actually built in 2009, but it wasn't designed to be our dry bin. This bin right here actually used to be positioned on this concrete pad, and last summer, summer of 2023, we raised it up with a crane, swung it over here into our dry bin position, and erected a new wet bin, 27,000 bushels, and this dry bin now holds 15,000 bushels. Reason being, our dry bin, we had a problem where it actually overfilled with grain two harvests ago, damaging the roof, requiring us to change around some things here at the bin site. So we took down that small butler bin and put up this new wet bin and moved over our wet bin to the new dry bin position. That's going to wrap up everything in our 2009 expansion with our leg, dryer, wet bin, dry bin, and blower system. And now that's actually going to bring us into our 2017 expansion with our newest addition of this grain bin, which holds 60,000 bushels, which we currently use to store our soybeans. In order to make room for this expansion here, we actually had to tear down our original farmstead. So that was located right here. The home was over 120 years old. So now we're left with a little bit of plot of grass here, which actually leaves us room for further expansions in the years to come. And that's the last of the grain bins, but that's not the last of the exciting things that we've installed here at the grain site. Because as you can tell with all this grain storage, as things began to expand, bushels began to increase, we needed to get greater throughput in terms of unloading grain at harvest, which if you follow me over here is one of the most exciting things that we have done here at the grain site. And that first starts under this black mat down here, which allows us to drop over a thousand bushels of a semi in less than three minutes into the dryer or into the wet bed. And the way that it does that is under these black tarps, we installed a 1200 bushel hopper. And that allows us to quickly unroll the traps on the semi. That way in less than three minutes, I unload the grain and I'm back on the road out to the field to get another load of grain brought back here to the farm. 
The most interesting thing and exciting thing about this grain pit that we installed of the summer of 2022 involves some of the electrical components, one of which is I'm able to remotely control when the pits turn on in addition to the unload conveyor and the leg. That way, as I'm pulling the truck onto the pits or the hopper bottom here, I can turn my gates open, start the auger prior to me even unloading out of the truck. And say that saves me three minutes of load and I'm turning, say, 20 loads a day. I'm already saving over 60 minutes of time just by having that remote control. Super cool, super efficient, and it saves about three minutes in terms of unloading in comparison to our unload conveyor, which we talked about earlier when we pr previously used the leg. That took about 20 minutes to unload a truck. So we're just continually trying to become more efficient around the grain site. Now that between Mason and I, we've given you a rundown of some of the things that have been changed in our family's farm's grain site over the last 50 years. Let's put Mason on the spot here and ask him if he's got any questions about anything we talked about today or any questions at all. I don't know. Put me on the spot. What do you got for future projects? Future projects is a question. Let's jump into them. Future improvement number one that I would like to see and do. Right now, I'm loading out of any of these grain bins out of our unload here in the leg. It takes us right around 20, 25 minutes to fill 1,100 bushel grain trailer. What I'd like to do is add a 2,500 bushel hopper that's suspended in the air. That way, in less than three minutes, we can fill a grain trailer, keep turning the trucks faster. Ideally, position that back there by the leg since we don't really want to forego the concrete we have here. It can't undermine the foundation of any of these other larger bins. So that's future improvement number one. Future improvement numero dos. I would like to transfer or move our LP tanks here and put on a large 30,000 gallon LP tank. That way we can buy our LP for our grain dryer a lot cheaper, buy it more at wholesale rather, rather than retail like we're doing now with our smaller tanks. So that's future improvement number two. Finally, and probably most importantly, improvement number three. Right here at our grain pit, when we have this thing open during the slut of harvest, and sometimes we get some of those popcorn showers that come in, the pit fills with water. Even right now, if I were to take cover off this pit, there's probably 100, 150 gallons of water sitting in here. So I'd like to build an overhead shed that I could park my semi in, have an opening on each end to drive the semi through. That way I can avoid having water, keep building up in these pits, and keep the longevity of them lasting far into the future. So those are the three improvements that I would like to see made in our family's grain site in my tenure of farming. I would also like to add maybe some power sweeps, some of the bins that we don't have the power sweep option in. But as long as Mason keeps coming home from college or coming home from work, I guess I can forego that cost option. Anything from you? If you want to see more content with Mason, Go ahead and comment the corn emoji down below. And for me, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Hit subscribe. Thanks so much, everybody, for watching. And we'll see you in the next one.